I was so scared and shocked and I was just just freeze. It's actually like I was like I felt like traumatized. I was in shock. Yeah, and you, you cannot really say no. Welcome back to Lustcast. Today I'm going to be following up on the latest podcast where we looked at the Rocco Sifredi situation. I met Rocco in person, so I can tell you all about that. And we also have Shona River back on the podcast, and she'd like to talk about her experience working with Rocco. Before we get into that, please remember to hit the like button uh, and subscribe to the podcast. So also on the podcast with me this week is Kiara Lord, as always. So hi to both of you. How's things going? Hey, happy new year. Yeah, happy, happy new, new year. year and Merry Christmas. Yeah, it's been an interesting time. It's been... It's been an interesting Christmas, you mean? <laughs> yeah, Christmas and New Year was just, for various reasons, very emotional for yes, me. Yes, <laughs> it like, was. Mm. Yeah, I think like this time of year, like, um, I don't know, every Christmas and New Year, it's, I feel like it's a time for bad, new, for bad news. Like, often, you know, that's, that's when relatives yeah. kind of decide to die, right? I don't know. Oh. It feels like that at times. Yeah, actually, my cat died. Your cat died. Yeah, yeah. on New Year's Eve. It's really sad. So yeah, I don't know what it is about the holidays, but like they're such a good thing, and I love them so much. But this year, honestly, I thought this would be different. Like I had really the Christmas spirit on my own. I would put Christmas songs on Aww. in my apartment, and then kind of my Christmas was a bit disappointing. But let's try it next year. Yeah, just yeah. plan a really good one for next year. Yeah, this is how it works. So yeah. just I didn't plan well enough, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you need more than just Christmas songs for a good Christmas. Yeah. I got balloons too. Oh. Yeah. But even the balloons didn't make oh. the trick. Okay. So it's really interesting for me is that um, when I posted the podcast about Rocco and the one with Nelly, I can't remember which one you replied to, but... I think you were one of the only people to publicly say that uh, you also had a bad experience working with Rocco. So, and like, I've known you for a long time and it was the first I'd heard of it as well. So I think it's good to get you on to talk about that. Um, lots of people contacted me in private. Some people were considering coming on and talking about it, but most people were afraid, like... Um, I, whether that means that their grievance is legitimate or not, I don't know. But it seems like a lot of people want to talk, but they're afraid. So I guess, like, why did you decide to talk, but maybe other people? I feel it's quite easy for me because I'm not really in porn anymore, not really actively. I'm doing my own stuff on OnlyFans, but I'm not afraid of speaking up anymore because I am I'm not afraid like oh then they won't book me anymore or I offend anybody I'm just talking about my past experience mm. but it's funny you mentioned Twitter because uh, I just uh, scrolled back and actually uh, Twitter started to show like how many people have seen the post yeah and I have literally uh, three times uh more views compared to my popular almost nude picture that what? I just retweeted your tweet about the Rocco podcast oh, and yeah. commented on it. And it was like the most popular thing but ever, although great. people were afraid to comment under it. It's, that's great. It's one of those things where I feel mm. what's happening with the podcast is like people are talking about it but they're talking about it in private. Like everybody, I know everyone in the industry has seen it for sure. Uh, everybody's sharing mm -hmm. it. Um, and we're all having these private conversations, but nobody's, have, very few people are having public conversations about it. True. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, we'll get you to tell us your story in a moment, but just in the interest of fairness, um, I just want to talk about some updates um, on the story from my point of view. Um, cause I think, um, the good thing about a podcast is that you get to have like these long in-depth conversations, but a bad thing about the podcast is it's not like a documentary where you can talk to both sides and get that person's input. So just 
and I think, um, you know, I spoke to Pierre Woodman about the public allegations that I mentioned about him. Um, and I also met with Rocco twice. We had two meetings over coffee um, where he gave me his side of the story, especially concerning the videos I posted. Um, so I just want to go through. I think first just on... I'm dying the, to hear what he said. Yeah, I think first just for people that didn't see my tweet on the Pierre Woodman thing, we had like a very constructive call and um, he showed me he demonstrated to me that the two public allegations that I mentioned, they were definitely false. Um, and that was proven to me. And he also showed me, um, how much, like, let's face it, like, let's be honest. There's three names that come up over and over again in the porn industry about complaints from models. And what's fascinating to me is that these three people are constantly attacking each other you know and it makes it hard to separate fact from fiction because there's so many um you know they're all trying to get each other yeah so it's like it's hard to tell what's bullshit and what's real so i think that's like a really important point um but i, I had um, a conversation with rocco and i think first um he categorically says that he's not a rapist and has never raped anybody um, that's something really important that he wanted to say. Um, another thing is the, like, you know, talking together as fellow porn producers, um, you know, and also with Woodman, you know, like we're all aware that there's bad things happening in the industry. Like mm. that's undeniable. Like he would say that there's very bad things happening in the business. Who said that? Um, Rocco, okay. also Woodman, um, you know, that's undeniable. Like, we all know that there's terrible things happening. Um, Did they say names? I, I don't want to get too into that because it's unfair to... You I, have to leave something for the next podcast. If anyways. they want to come on the podcast and say names, that's up to them. Mm. Um, but, yeah, for me, like, it's undeniable that there are problems in the European porn industry because we all say that's true. Um, and in the Americans. <laughs> and um, in Rocco's opinion, he is the least bad. Like he says, like everybody makes mistakes. Like absolutely, he's made mistakes before. Um, he gave a specific example of say, like maybe in a scene where he slapped a girl too hard, and then had to like you know learn and get better at reading people's body language and knowing like when you can push, when you can't push. Um, so he says like, he's definitely made mistakes in the past, but learned from them. Um, one of his defenses were, because there were five videos that I posted. Mm -hmm. I have more that are also problematic, but this was examples that, um, if I show more, they're just more examples of the same stuff, you know? So, uh, one of the defenses he set out was that, um, a lot of the videos I showed were very old, um, like whether you can decide for yourself if that just is that if that's a justification or not um i think being realistic just as a man in like the 20 years i've been a man what is acceptable male behavior and what's not has changed you know especially with regards to like what's acceptable in the workplace what sort of standards we expect from interactions between males and females. And that's not to excuse the stuff that men did that was bad in the past, but it is to say that just as a society, I think we have got better. Um, and I, I do think it's hard to judge, you know, you know, when, when things are just the norm and we don't, we're not like educated to know something's bad, then you know, it's hard to judge the past by like the present's values, you know? So I do think we have to be fair in that way. Um, I don't think it is an excuse for everything I saw in the videos, but I think it can, you know, like in America, obviously the porn industry was also had a lot of bad practices and that's been improved. And I don't personally think that that's necessarily been improved in Europe yet, but I'm open-minded. Um, Another thing that he said that was really interesting is that 
in the past, the agents wanted them to get anal from a girl that didn't do anal. Um, because if they got the girl to do anal, it meant the agent could sell the videos for, they could get her more work, you know? Mm. Yeah, because <laughs> she's already doing it, so she would do for the next time, probably. Yeah, which is a pretty incredible thing to say, in my yeah. opinion. Um, you know, that's just how the industry was, it seems. Like, obviously, that's incredibly wrong. Um, but that's how it was. Like, you know, Eastern Europe, end of communism, Western porn producers coming here. I think there's no doubt that um, the, a lot of women in the porn industry in this country were seriously exploited, you know, underpaid, um, maybe not treated in the best way. But whether that was just the norm for porn at the time or something unique to here, I don't know. Um, but it, it's interesting. Um, I mentioned the girl in the first video. Um, if you if you're like watching along on my Twitter, it's Ask Lustcast, and you can see there's like five videos that I pulled out. Um, the girl in video one, like in my opinion, she really didn't look like she wanted to be there. It was very very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, Rocco dismissed that as just she's crazy. Um, and, you know, we had a conversation about crazy girls in porn. Like, of course, there's crazy girls and guys in all industries and porn is no different. You do sometimes just get crazy people. Um, personally, I'm not sure that justifies the video. Um, but he said, like, you know, that's why I asked her if she's been, why she's been abused as a child, because, you know, she was crazy. I wanted to understand why she was crazy. Um you know, in my opinion, you know, I've laid out my opinions um, on that video, but that's his opinion. Yeah, but didn't it make him feel uncomfortable that she was so weird? Um, I, I can only tell you what he said. Um, I, I asked all the questions I could, but it, it was a difficult conversation, even though we met twice. Um, you know, Rocco is a very passionate guy. And he tends to jump around a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a very emotional topic. So I understand it's not the easiest thing to talk about. I, I did my, and it wasn't, you know, in a podcast setting. So I'm just relaying as best I can his feelings um, okay. and his point of view. And then um, the Marilyn Sugar one, which was maybe the most recent one. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I picked that one out because it matched a lot of the other allegations I'd heard against him. Um, he, he was really, he was very, very confident in that one. Um, and he came back and like the second day, it felt like he'd thought more about the videos and what I'd shared. And I might just be careful just to get things right. Could you tell me what was in that video? Because I haven't seen that. Um, it's... Uh, it's not fair for me to do it while watching along, but it was... Um, what was the main problem with that particular one? Uh, consent. So for me, in my opinion, she didn't look like she understood the question about can I have anal sex? And it looked like the scene was supposed to just be a blowjob scene. And um, it looked like a lot of pressure to have anal throughout the video. Um including a bit where like the tip of the penis was put in her ass. Um, so, but, so this is, so he was very, very, very strong in his reply on this. He said she was very, very happy after the scene. She, in his opinion, she spoke very good English. At the beginning of the scene, she told him that um, she's submissive. And so in his opinion, like that's part of the game, like, saying no is part of submissive play um you know and he gave lots of examples of many girls that are in the industry or in private life that um like to say no that like to maybe challenge the guy and maybe he should also sex. read the law because well this law, is the if you say no that's a, a rape so he well, should be aware of that as well, this well. is yeah this is um the question um in and i said i'm giving his opinion I, i've already given mine um 
like I say, uh, for me, if you're going to play this role ca- a forced sex role play game, then there needs to be some consent that you're going to be playing, you know, the no game. Um, personally, I don't think saying you're submissive qualifies as consenting to role play rape. Now, I don't know what was agreed off camera. Um, I don't know what consent forms have been filled out. Um, but Rocco says she was very happy, went home very happy. He remembers it well. Um, he also says that he doesn't keep, because obviously when we post the footage, there's some additional footage that's not published. He says that he doesn't keep that. So that there's only records going back. I think he keeps footage for about a year and then it's deleted. They just recycle their memory cards and what have you. So um, unless the girl speaks up and says something about like, yes, this is a good scene or this is a bad scene. um, It's just my professional opinion reacting to the video um, and what Rocco says about the scene. And you know it so he's he's saying he has something like king.com has because they are like famous of um starting a scene with the interview like what they shot um, after the movie was it was very vague i, I did ask like about consent then why he is not uploading that like when the girl is actually verifying no, but he, see this is the thing this is where i have to like live or die by what i say like um my argument about porn has always been we're making entertainment. Like, you know, when you shoot someone in a movie, like it's not real. Like um, just because something's happening in a porno, it doesn't mean it's real. It's entertainment. So, you know, that's his argument for this is that it's entertainment. He's making a fantasy. Um, if I just, I just want to go through his other points because, um, I don't know. One thing that concerned me was um, that obviously she wasn't booked for anal, she wasn't booked for sex, um, but they had sex anyway. Um, But his argument was, look, have you never done something more with a girl than what you booked her for? Um, I think, being honest with myself, I probably have, like in a very small way. Like maybe I've asked for rimming and that wasn't written down in the scene. Um, It's something that, like maybe like now I definitely wouldn't do because like now I think the practices in the porn industry is so much stronger and we all know that, you know, you need to make a list and check that, you know, kissing is okay, touching fingers, like every thing you're going to do in the video, you should be approving it before you do the video. Um, and that's my, that's what I do now. I didn't in the past, in the past I was more spontaneous. Is it in every shoot this happens? Um, I believe in Europe and America. As well? I believe going by Visa and Mastercard rules, consent is a really big part of it. So, um, you know, I do have to disagree with him on that, but I, I would say that it's something I've been guilty of in the past. And you know, maybe for basic things, I've just said like, "Will you do this? Will you do that?" Um, and you know, obviously they're booked for a sex scene, but, you know, all the parts that make up that sex scene, in the past I'd improvised. Whereas, you know, in the last three or four years, when we had like a better understanding of proper consent in the porn industry, um, that's not been the case with me anyway. Um, and yeah, again, on the English, his argument was our English was very good and understood. My argument was that, her English was very bad and that she didn't understand everything. Um, he says like he put the tip of his penis in her ass and then stopped when he saw there was a problem. Um, people know my opinions on that, but it's me, my professional opinion versus, um, Rocco's opinion. Um, and as I said, Rocco says, this is play. This is like, um, part of foreplay part of if you're with someone that's submissive you know, part, saying no is like part of foreplay um yeah i think i mentioned already other videos were dismissed as old um and some it was just like look if you see the full scene without editing it's um 
it's fine it looks different um obviously i disagree on that but that's what he says and then the really interesting thing he said is that like he works for like he doesn't distribute his own porn it's distributed by gamma entertainment and evil angel and he makes a really good point he says like these are like two of the strictest companies when it comes to ethics in porn they're hyper strict there's lots of things he's not allowed to do like he said you know sometimes if a girl's puked um it has to be edited out um if a girl um passes out when she's choked even for a few seconds it has to be edited out they don't like to show it so you know there are standards um and yeah like i wish i could get in touch with someone at gamma or evil angel for a statement but i haven't um they have obviously i've seen that they're definitely paying attention and had a look at it so i guess we all know based on the actions they take um if they think there's anything wrong with his content but this or his just processes said it happens and they just yeah. like edit pretend it out. It, edited out and pretend this never happened well like yeah it's still well happens. you know you can vomit by accident during a blowjob without doing something too bad uh, something yeah but who knows what else happened but i i have a, a great story for this i yeah, remember let, meeting let me just i just want to focus on what rocco said sorry to cut you off um but i just want to give his side of the story and it is a good point like um gamma and evil angel like based on what actions they take i think we all know if they think there is anything wrong with either the process that Rocco has or with his content. Um, and he actually showed me uh, an email from Evil Angel where, in their opinion, um, the things... In their opinion, this was just all bullshit. I can't remember the exact quote in the email because I didn't take a screenshot of anything. He just showed me the reply from Evil Angel where they thought it was bullshit. So... It seems like, at least from Evil Angel's point of view, they either are not taking it seriously or they just don't think there's a case to answer. Because hmm. um, they all, their company who cares about the profit and in America they only are more strict and put boundaries because they are suable. In America, everybody loves to suit and they don't want to pay a lot of money. It's not about in America, they are much more thoughtful and nicer people. Well, this this is, is the only thing, they are all for profit. Yeah, well, this is the thing, you know, and legal liability does make people more honest. Um, so in addition to obviously Gamma and Evil Angel selling the content, um, I also contacted Visa and MasterCard because they're the people who have put out all these new rules around consent. Um, so I just asked them like flat out, like, you know, is this content okay? Um, this is what it looks like to me. Um, is there any problem with this, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, how do these rules apply? Like who's enforcing them? Who's responsible? Because Visa and MasterCard set rules on what content is okay and what's not um and i wanted to know like how, how that's enforced because i couldn't see anywhere to report this like reporting it to gamma and evil angel couldn't do it um reporting it to visa and mastercard couldn't do it so like if there's not even anywhere to report this stuff how you know how do they get information um so they said, um, our adult content registration program is about keeping illegal content off our network. We originally detailed the program in April 21st in a blog post. Um, the program requires sites that set MasterCard. Oh, this is on MasterCard, by the way. Visa didn't reply. So the program requires that sites that are set MasterCard as a form of payment have controls that allow them to monitor, block, and remove unlawful content. These standards also demand confirmation of age and consent from anyone in adult content. So to me, obviously, that saying that Gamma and Evil Angel, they need processes in place where they are collecting consent from the performers. Now, if that's happening in the middle of a scene rather than before it and at the end of it, 
you know, I don't know if that's in keeping with the spirit of Visa and MasterCard's rules. Um, and yeah, and I, again, it's like reporting it to Gamma and Evil Angel when they're the ones producing and selling the content. It's like asking the police to investigate the police. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I don't really understand that. Um, and then as we've noted in our standards and related documents, it's the responsibility of the acquirer, uh, the bank that connects merchants to our network to ensure that the websites they work with meet our adult content and services requirements. So that's basically saying that the, so Visa and MasterCard, they say they're not responsible for policing this. So they set the rules, but then they're acquiring bank um, mm -hmm. is the one that enforces them. Mm -hmm. Now, Gamma Entertainment are, they might even be the biggest. They might be, I don't know if they're bigger than MindGeek um, or Web Group, but they're a top three porn company. They're banging huge amounts of money through um, credit and debit cards worldwide. Now, I don't know what incentive the acquiring bank, I don't know if like, because the things happening in Rocco's videos I suspect if they were on my site, regardless of if they're consensual or not, and it's just acting, I'm pretty sure my acquiring bank wouldn't let me post it. Like they audit my site every year and I just don't see any situation where a girl's saying no and then sex is happening anyway, where that's going to be okay with my bank. Yeah, it's quite unique. Um, isn't it? So I don't know if it's just such a large amount of money that the acquiring bank is turning a blind eye. But, you know, I think so. A, a key thing is like, if it's, um, is it simulated? Or is it real? Um, obviously, Rocco says it's just simulated. It's um, part of foreplay. It's role play. But isn't it sad that actually Visa and MasterCard, who cares about us the most about performers and it's not about like we have a community or union who there is a union i reported it to the porn performers union and they didn't show i never they didn't, heard about the they didn't even union. they never yeah. there's a, a group called apag the union of porn performers i reported it to them but no one even replied mm -hmm. no one cared i tagged them in stuff they showed zero interest so uh, they are but they don't do anything. So I don't they... know if it's because I'm not a member or because there's not many members in Europe. Um, maybe they only care about US things. I don't know if they're like US specific, but all I can say is they show zero interest. Um, but yeah, so I... Thanks Visa and MasterCard to looking after yeah, us. Well, to <laughs> a so point, nice to a you. point, to a point. Um, because of the nature of their reply, I asked Visa and MasterCard if these rules only apply to user-generated sites like um, OnlyFans and yeah. Pornhub because it seemed to me like they fit that model better because, again, you exactly. can't ask Gamma to police Gamma, whereas when you report something on OnlyFans, like, OnlyFans don't yeah, want crazy bad strict. stuff on there. Like, they want to remove the bad content, you know? Whereas yeah, like Gamma, the, they've you know, produced the content, they own the content or they've licensed the content. So they're even removing some of my like really innocent solo movies. Yeah. So, so I asked, um, MasterCard about mm -hmm. this again, Visa didn't reply. Um, only MasterCard did. They were busy. And it's obviously a credit to MasterCard Taking that they money. did reply. Um, <laughs> so I, and the key thing I asked them is I asked them if simulated non-consensual content is allowed and this is a big problem with Visa and MasterCard setting rules for pornography is they will never ever be specific about what's allowed and what's not Why? I don't know it's like they they clearly set rules mm -hmm. but then they won't tell us what the rules are um maybe so, maybe, so yeah. who knows so the, the reply, real rules then. the reply I got was first let us clarify the standards we've emailed about apply to all non-face-to-face -face purchases of adult content. And under these standards, the merchant website must support a process to address complaints uh, or concerns raised. Um, that they ignored my question about if non-consensual simulated content is allowed or not. Um, and I also asked them about, because they said that sometimes they get reports um, and then they investigate. But I said, how do you get reports? There's no 
form to report anything or is it just based on casual conversations like this and they said based on your notes we'll look into this further in order to for the appropriate action to be taken so good thing is that at least someone is finally going to have a look at it mm-hmm. um so and like i say maybe there's nothing wrong with the content there's nothing wrong with the process maybe there's all sorts of evidence of consent that can be shown that hasn't been shown to me because i'm just doing a podcast you know um and i guess we'll see you know um maybe something will happen maybe it won't um i have no idea but obviously i think rocco's opinion is very robust i think um you know could it be simulated in part of a game absolutely like porn is fake did it look like that to me in my personal opinion no but i also i want to say something about this specifically Mm -hmm. that about like simulating uh, stuff in porn um it took me um like ages to be able to actually start performing on a on a set so what i'm trying to say is it's mostly you um reacting on an action Mm -hmm. so all the new new girls that we've seen on those videos in my opinion there's no way they are simulating or acting because the situation there is very humbling and you just pretty much um, react on what's happening to you. So I really don't see that being a simulation. And still now, after doing uh, porn for a decade, finding hard to simulate uh, rapey stuff, for instance, mm. because I just can't. And especially because for a lot of girls, that can be quite triggering. So it's, if you are going to be it's quite simulating scary. things like that, you it's should. quite scary. And you know what? Especially because these are, you know, girls who have maybe performed, I don't know, a few times uh, or very new. Uh, I can see the genuine fear on their faces. And I don't, uh, I don't think they are that great of an actresses to fake such faces. See, me and Rocco talked about this. Um, and I, I understand sure him that. wanting the spontaneity you know because yeah it's exactly spontaneous yeah i filmed a lot of girls first ever scenes Mm -hmm. and there is something unique about um the fear of being on camera you know yeah like the the awkwardness the shyness Mm -hmm. and it's not necessarily shy about sex like some of these girls might be like escorts for years in their private life but having a camera pointing on your in your face and having sex on camera it's Makes different. A and, difference. Yeah, and there is some. I, I get capturing that. I get everybody reacts differently to a camera being pointing at them, and it's not necessarily their real personality. And we had this like a really interesting conversation. And uh, another thing he mentioned that I'm in complete agreement with him in, on on is two things. Like one, that sex education is so bad, and like children need to be educated about porn, like. Yeah, but they he's need to not be, helping. <laughs> he, he, he tries, to be fair. To be fair to him, he does try. How? Um, he's tried talking at schools and things like that, and he is doing a sex education series. Yeah, so. but then, yeah, but you say one thing, like and you're drinking wine and, you know, talking water. True, but I can only, like, and he does, he is a very high profile person in Italy. We understand that, but and it's he not does, educational he, d- he does. All. He does talk about porn and the negative effects of it. And uh, it's not real. But, he's but he reinforcing. He is one of the top person who is uh, reinforcing the the negative. Yeah. Things. I, I, I mean, have that, a that question for argued. you, Kiara. For mm-hmm. you, um, was he your first shoot or in the first few? Yeah, yeah, yeah. First few. Yeah, for me too. So I can also relate what you said. You are just like trying to survive the scene and you know, it's know not what's fun going at all. And, and like, there is no script. There is no uh, talk. I mean, there was no talk about what's going to happen, but it was quite, you know, a rough scene. And I'll remember it until the day I die for sure. My ass was 
like um, slept so many times that it was burning for a few days after. Mm. And you can see it on the video. I'm like, I'm like a tomato. In was the, it the, the famous like the the casting yeah, movie the casting. with the trophy room and yes, the casting one. Um, you know it. It was it was rough. I mean, I'm not. You know, he didn't uh, um, fuck me anally, or you but know. Did he try to? Um, not on camera. He tried outside of camera to teach me how to do it. But uh, because he's so nice, he's doing sex education all the time. So he thought he's yeah, going well, to explain to you as well. But really, um, so as for this casting video, I think it was like my third or fourth uh, video. There has been zero conversation before. It's like you're being dropped into the pool and mm. you see how you'll swim. And what does your agent say to you before the scene? Uh, just a regular uh, boy girl scene. Okay. Did you know Rocco? Have you seen any movie with him before? Um uh, actually no. I mean I've heard Did you know what to expect when you were going on a No, shoot? no, 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 no. No. Um you know, but it's fine. Perhaps they could have told me that it's going to be a, you know, perhaps more rough than you expect it to be. But I was uh, definitely not prepared, you know, my body being slapped all over the place. Did she say his name? Because for me, it's often happened that uh, they would just send me a, qu a quick message like, hey, you're free tomorrow or in two days or in three days, boy girl movie for this much money. Mm. And when I uh, started asking, so for which company, mm -hmm. who is the male actor or female actor mm -hmm. and this kind of stuff, then my agent always got uh, so angry with me and like labeled me as being difficult. Just by for wanting to know who you're working Just for with. wanting to know who I am work mm -hmm. with, who is the actor and mm -hmm. such things. So Isn't that she, like important? She, <laughs> she labeled me as being uh, difficult. And I was thinking when I grew up, when I was like in my early teens, I thought agent is for the star, for the model, for the yeah. actor, for the sportman who works for the, the star. So, so and I'm then so from not. a first-hand experience, unfortunately, I had to experience that actually we are working for them and we are afraid to say something to the agent if yeah. you don't like something. And I feel like sometimes we are a pack of baby wipes Mm. And I am like a piece of baby vibes. And if they don't like me, they just wipe their dick in me or hand yeah. and then throw away and they have a whole pack and they just don't care. We are like uh, replaceable. Disposable, yeah. Disposable. yeah. Well, let's. Um... I never felt like they are uh, building my career. They just want to make the most amount of money yeah. with me. Use. And after, when I'm done, next there's just Expired. next coming yeah well let's definitely talk about that i think because that's interesting and um i think it just i just want to mention something about nelly kent who oh, came please. on the podcast because she appeared in an interview with vice magazine in Rema in romania and in the magazine she said again that i edited her out of context yeah. and blah 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 but then she repeated the same allegation she made on my podcast to vice so and you made, more and much much worse like the things she said are so outrageous that i'm not even going to repeat them here so against the same person yeah or? yeah yeah so I, she, I don't really understand how she takes back everything she said and then she would take yeah, the exact same thing and even added more yeah thing we, we don't stuff. understand either yeah so. I, I think at this point it's hard to explain <laughs> yeah i um, don't know but that's her again making the same allegations but in a different publication um and more like you can dismiss her as crazy or whatever mm -hmm. that's just make your own decision i, I don't you know. put I don't up know. Uh, the podcast with her again it's I, up. I, I, she did, was... I did put it back up it's up okay and um just i put it back up just to prove that you were I didn't not lying lead yeah. her i didn't ask her any questions yeah. she brought it up um and um she mentioned something in the interview that i think you two will find really interesting she said 
about 150 new girls a year um, in Europe start porn and they just disappear, you know. I read that part. And I think that's about right. Maybe it's not as many as 150. But, but disappear as in they don't make it. Yeah, they, they in come the into Korea. porn. I'm not surprised. They do a they few didn't videos the and they go. Number, but. but in America, it's not like that. Like the girls come into the industry and they tend to leave if they get a boyfriend. But then they come back, you know. People have long careers lasting like 10, 15 years. Like almost all the names that were mm -hmm. in the business when I started are still in the business now in some form. Yeah, but maybe those not popular ones, they did three, four or five and they felt like it's not for them or... Possibly, but I personally... So I think it should be something similar in America as well. I, I'm, I'm sure they have much... Like, I'm sure not every agent in America is good, we know this, but I know of at least five very good ones that manage the girls' careers, support them, um, help them build up like step by step. Um, they all have different strategies they recommend. So picking the right agent that suits you is important. And I know one agent I never here, heard but, strategy in my whole career from my agent. Well, I know one agent in Budapest that does manage girls' careers and they've got quite good at it now. Um, and I think, you know, obviously not all agents do that. But um, yeah, I do think there's a problem in Europe um, around agents. Like you say... Um, how much information they're giving girls. I'm very, very nervous personally about so many girls coming into the industry, doing some videos and then disappearing. Yeah, that was like, one of my fear. Fiera, I, have you ever felt that uh, your agent is actually like have a strategy for you and building your career or more like it just like you're... A... No, I was also a baby wipe. Oh, <laughs> No, never. And I'm also considered one of the most problematic ones in the industry. We have friends for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> we stick together, the problematic the, ones. The, the, yeah. When I posted about this Rocco story, um, Rocco thinks that it's like a personal attack on him and he doesn't really understand why I'm pursuing it. And for me, I said to him, like, look, I'm just following a story where it goes. If, for me, the way Nelly was shut down was a bigger story than what she said, you know. When she said what she said, that would have been posted. And then that's it, you know. But because she was stopped by Brill Babes from talking, it made me think there's more going on here. Now, he says that the reason Brill Babes contacted her is because he asked them to. Um... That's fine, that's his opinion, but for me, um, I, I didn't see it that way. I saw it as something more nefarious, and that's why I've just followed the threads, really. So I think this will probably be the last podcast on the topic from me. But yeah, as long as I see some sort of story that needs reporting, I'll report it. Um, and yeah, when I posted it and you um, like tweeted, like I think something like, oh, finally someone's mm -hmm. talking about Rocco Sifredi. Um, I've known you for a long time and I'd never heard you say anything bad about him before. So it surprised me. So I think let's just um, back up and just tell us like what it was like shooting for him and what it is exactly you want to complain about, I guess. Uh, you didn't hear me complain about it because I'm usually not complaining too much. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I managed to, I have a strong willpower and I stood up for myself. Okay. I was, I was like aware at the moment what's happening, but it was like super difficult because as Kiara said, like you are there and you are just like reacting to the actions and, and you are just like kind of like trying to survive the situation you are like not controlling anything yeah, well let's take us through at it. the moment take us so through from like the beginning for me it's, it was similar to kiara i think it was my mm -hmm. third ever and i didn't know who rocco was but when i told my close friends 
especially the guys like oh wow it's so exciting you do porn it's so crazy but exciting and then I told them like oh and then my next shoot is coming with a guy named Rocco or who and they were like oh my god Rocco see Freddy oh my god he's super hardcore and he did and such thing and other thing and I was I was so scared like oh my god and I told my agent like I'm not sure I want to do this scene and and she told me oh but don't worry the scene is going to be with another actor named Chad and you just met Chad in a yeah in Chad Rockwell previous... used to hang out with us I remember yeah and it's like oh you know Chad he's okay so Rocco it's for Rocco it's a casting video but you're not gonna be with Rocco only with Chad Chad is gonna be the actor and Rocco is just asking some questions Okay. And I was just like, still like uh, a bit overwhelmed, but like, oh, okay, that's acceptable. And on the day I went to the shoot, uh, he greeted me in the makeup. Like, uh, I look up to him as uh, he has like a really strong charisma. So he's like a really good TV personality. Mm, he's very as passionate. You, as you mentioned. And like, I often go to Italy and everybody loves him. It can be a three-year-old girl till the hundred-year-old anybody and everybody loves him. So I felt this like really charismatic man. And then, uh, but when we started the scene, he was asking question in the beginning, it was all right. And so then... And what they said, the scene was with Chad, right? Yes. So I just... Supposed it to be with Chad. And I started the scene, he was um, asking some questions of so me. So Rocco is asking you questions. Yeah, and he's holding the camera in his really intimidating room. It's like, it's a... Um, How can a room be intimidating? Uh, it's approximately as big as your living room, but I have never seen this many trophy in my whole life. In oh one yeah, he has room. all his like XBs and AVNs. XBs, AVN like till up to the ceiling from every corner you see like oh my god i'm with a superstar i have to uh, and you have this like um pressure mm -hmm. pressure that uh, i have to be really good he's a really important person i cannot do a bad scene it would be so bad for me and you got that impression just from the just room fr and the just trophies. from the room plus my um my friends were like, like, oh my God, Rocco, see Freddy. And it was a huge pressure on me because I was at university doing my diploma. So I'm not coming from the from poverty where I, this is my only solution to get out of it. I would have like other things going on for me. Mm -hmm. But it's a, it's a big pressure because I already shot two porn movies. Mm -hmm. So if I, if I mess this up, then maybe I ruin my career and then but everybody going to see my three porn movies and judge me when I try to have like a mainstream job. So it was a huge pressure on but me. But nobody Plus, like told you this pressure. It's just like a natural pressure from doing porn. No. No, plus the girl who scouted at me, she was a, she was a liar. Like she, she contacted me on Facebook and uh, then she was supposed to be my mentor or what. And she, she uh, told me a, a lot of lies just to pursue me. I should do all kind of movies because then she got... What, what uh, lies did she tell you? So she was a, only a girl, girl performer, but not so good. And she would not do anal or, or a boy, girl or a lot of things. So she started, she tried to make money off scouting. And when she find a new girl, she would get some percent from her salary. Mm -hmm. So she liked to me, she does boy, girl movies and she does anal and all that kind of stuff. And then every time I went on shoot, I told the girl name and all the guys like, I never heard of her. Oh, so she was just like, so this trying was the to be person relatable. who was uh, supposed to be my big sister who is looking after me, but I just uh, got a bunch of lies instead of Holy shit. Uh, helping. She just wanted to. 
um, and so make she, more money from me. And so she introduced you to your agent? Yes. And are we allowed to say who your agent is or was? Yeah, Bria Babes. A name that comes up a lot, it seems, with anything bad in this industry. What a coincidence. Yeah, I wonder why. Crazy. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) So she worked for Bill Babes? Yes. Okay. So she did a few scenes and then every time I met a new actor, like, do you know this girl? No, I never met her. So it's the end. And who was this girl, if you don't mind me asking, if that's okay to say? Diana Dolce. Never heard of her. Oh, Diana Dolce. I think I've heard the name before, but... I've never heard Diana Dolce. So she only shoot like a handful of movies and she tried to make money mm-hmm. in this way. Mm. So so anyways, where was I? So I was at Rocco's place and I had this huge um, pressure on me that I have to please people. He has to be happy with me. Otherwise she can break my whole career but it who, hadn't who told even you that, uh, started it's just a feeling because just a feeling. because from my um high school friends and university friends they all knew Rocco so just because he was and so plus famous the, from his fame and seeing all that um trophies on the wall I felt uh, really pressured I felt so little when I was there like mm. seeing you know wow this huge success so you feel very little when you're yeah, I guess there it is intimidating like yeah it is i remember like when i was doing well in porn like um i had this really nice apartment and the joke was that like obviously it looked so nice that girls would like take their clothes off once they saw it you know <laughs> but although we joked about that it is intimidating going to someone's house who's clearly a lot wealthier than you you know there is like and then and it's his power territory with money but anyway sorry sorry yeah. i mean the the room itself was not like crazy marvel till the sailing but just uh only the trophies plus his uh fame mm. so we get through the questions they were like all fine and then um chad came and we we started um blowjob and so blowjob with chad with chad okay. yes uh and he was for that come on Rocco, let's you have to do deep throat you have to go deeper deeper and i was like no no but you have to do it you have to do it come on baby come on come on and he was like so uh pushy mm. and then chad started to push me and I just said no and I felt so uncomfortable mm. uh, doing and this and it wasn't was like, agreed before and the it, scene it was not agreed and I do I say no and ignore like a couple of times and it was just keep doing keep doing mm. and it, I just felt so uncomfortable mm. yeah doing it don't know if you had something similar Rocco always uh, used to just tell me one thing, like, baby, I need to see the passion in your the eyes. Passion. <laughs> the passion. The uh, passion. That's it. Like, I want Come to on, see... Come on, I want more energy. Yeah, more energy. I want to see you enjoy. You that you want this dick. Um, I get that. I like. I tell people that before the scene. Like, um, I want to see like a hunger. But typically, that's one thing. Like, you have to do deep throat. Come on, come on, come on. And it's like, I, I think uh, so you can either do it or you can't. I don't right? want to exaggerate, like, but I, I felt like sh- he's saying it like at least like hundred times or something. Yeah. And then we start to have sex with Chad. With Chad. With Chad. And then he just have some. I don't know. Inspiration. Let's call it an inspiration. Right, and he just yeah. put the camera down, or he no, he was like already like jerking, uh, jerking and holding the camera, and then he's just. How did you feel when he started just jerking off? I, I was like so overwhelmed. I I don't think it really affected me. I I do I don't remember remember that part, but I was really scared when he just take the camera and like put it on the table and he's just he thought he would just pop in just pop in just pop like, in like right? someone in a sitcom <laughs> just like hey yeah, it's like, <laughs> what? yeah and 
I was so scared and shocked and I was just just freeze and it's not like it, it's actually like I was like I felt like traumatized I was in I was in shock yeah, and you, I, feel, you, you, you feel cannot violated. really yeah. you cannot really say no because as I said I mentioned all the things of pressure mm. and and you're I so like, shocked that and you, I'm you, so you can't shocked, even like, react to that and you know what I feel really lucky because I was almost 24 years old oh and i i was like probably you started way, quite late so way more confident like compared to an 18 year old yeah. myself mm. i think like it was like way better and you speak good english so you can be very clear with what you say and yeah. you understand what's been said yeah so then he just uh joined and then for a for a while it was like a blowjob for him and chad and maybe I was having sex with Chad as well. And suddenly he was just get upset with Chad that he was uh, not getting, he was not like 100% hard because mm -hmm. then later Chad also told me he felt really intimidated by him. Mm -hmm. So he just sent him away. And I remember the first time he entered me, there was no, he just pushed it in and his dick is so big I felt so much pain mm. it was he like it was not if uh, Shona now I'm gonna fuck you or something nothing he just fucked you amazing he, like, put it in and it was so painful I because even it. if I say like yeah let's have sex it doesn't mean that you can just like mm -hmm. stab me it mm -hmm. was like actually like a st stabbing mm. because you, you cannot just like give a blowjob to a guy for 20 minutes and like somebody would like put this like thick ass this thick dick inside me it was a warm-up for them but not for me yeah 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 so, and you weren't like offered lube or anything <laughs> just no and so and then what so it was and then we did the uh, we were having sex and then he was doing his usual things like, oh, yeah, more passion, passion, Blech. very good. Oh, Ugh. And then, of, okay, after a few minutes sex, I got, start, he started <clears throat> pressuring me for, ah, but what I really like no. is anal. No. You have to do anal. <laughs> your, your ass is so good. It's, for, you have it's to built do for anal. that. Well, this is the thing. He says that obviously... Um, oh, God. This is just part of a game. Oh, but it um, doesn't. That it's consensual. Um, but well, it, to it me, it sounds like he's just asking for anal in the middle of a scene. and Yeah, without any preparation or... Yeah, you hadn't so cleaned what, out or anything. And, or, and when he said that, what was your response? No. And then what? Ah, but baby, you have to do it. It's very good. <laughs> You have Trust to. Trust me, you're gonna enjoy. Oh. Mm -hmm. Of course, the, the usual stuff. And? And I said, no, thank you. But probably without the thank you. Yeah. Just no. And I was just. And since then, I think this is one of my worst scenes. And even I don't feel like deeply traumatized after this. I would never watch this scene because it would make me so uncomfortable and taken advantage of. And I remember calling my agent after this. Mm. And then t you told me it's going to be with just Chad and Rocco. And she said, oh, really? Oh, oh, that's surprising. But I'm 100% <laughs> sure. Yeah, I mean, as the worst. It's like it happens all the time. And it was really interesting what you said, what Rocco said, that actually the agents are asking to break in the girls. Mm. So then he they said would they used make, to. He said so they used now. to, but a, okay, it was seven years then. ago. Mm. So it's interesting. So I feel like it's, that is uh, like they kind are, of that they, is like kind of pimping, isn't it? They are like alive. You're conditioning and they are the like team up against. It's a us. Sim symbiosis. Yeah, and I don't remember. I didn't even know I can ask more money if uh, there are two men on set. 
So and I you would really have thought felt that the violated. Agent, that you would have the, thought that the agent would want you to be paid more money because then they get more money. Yeah, but so the fact that that's not, not happening, case. like I'm very suspicious about the relationship that Brio Babe specifically have with different producers because, like, why wouldn't they want the girl to get more money unless they're getting like some extra kickback already? I don't know. I'm not saying that's happening, but it seems like they're not financially motivated in this way. Or unless, it's really strange. I don't know. And they're not really looking after the girl's best interest. So they're not carefully managing my career. So I would stay for long years. So eventually we would make more money together. They just go for the really short gains. Have you been sent to this uh, old uh, young company, porn company? Old, yeah. Old, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I told my agent, Brill Babes, that uh, I remember the, the casting when they had this long list and what you're comfortable with. And I said a hard no for for old man. And I remember this really young girl who didn't felt like not working and she would just like, oh, I just let you work for me and I take the commission from you. And she, the girl who only does uh, Diana Dolce, who, who only did the uh, girl girl and she was like trying to pursue me to do old man because, ah, oh, don't worry, babe, you won't even feel it. Guys, and for me, like, it was worse. First, I wanna, I wanna feel. I like sex, so I want to feel it. And secondly, like the money is not so much what I get for a scene. Like I don't wanna see me fucking with a ninety-year-old well, man and forever on the internet. So uh, my first uh, agent was actually Chucky Eyes. Oh, nice. And it was him who sent me to shoot to old yeah and guess what he told me i remember when he called me on the phone and i was in a shopping mall in budapest and he said hey there's like um like a package shooting opportunity for you in belgium mm -hmm. and i was like cool and he's like it's just just a little bit older man but not grandpas or anything like that like it's like a man in their 40s or something and you know i was oh, like lied. I was like, but it's funny because there's a regular porn man. But it's not funny, you know. And yeah. and um, I was like, okay, so I don't see the problem here, you know. So I went off. I go to Belgium, and when I saw uh, a man who was the age of my grandpa, I honestly thought he's like a worker or something. Mm around the house and then they told me no it's your acting partner and i was in the deepest shock state i couldn't it, it was like the world just stopped people at home are not gonna quite understand unless they've seen the site but these guys look like 70 80 year old yes grandpa. they might so maybe be a little they're bit, younger but they, the they might point be is younger to have the most yeah they might be younger but they look like they've had a hard life if they are younger you know like they look absolutely atrocious so um like lizards and it was a i would rather have a lizard and it was a package scene i a, like um i'm i don't know i think i was problematic back then too because i just didn't want to do a lot of those scenes um and there was another scene um very very hardcore um mental domination mostly oh it's the same company isn't it is it they've got one called like um yeah subspace subspace land yeah, yeah subspace land guys i was crying really i was crying but hysterically and i could not stop crying because it was so traumatizing and this company shoots this subspace scenes specifically around midnight so mm. that you get into the state of knowing that it's fucking dark outside and it's 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 mostly mental domination mm -hmm. besides the physical domination as crying as fuck and then i decided that this no but did you do the thing i did everything did you did you agree to what happened I don't remember. I don't mm. know, but it was like my second week of shooting porn and I was in a huge house 
in the middle of nowhere, as usually it so is. Your agent be- betrayed you. He was like, yeah, not representing you. Absolutely not. And one time I was also sent to a show to dance where I was refused to get paid by Pussycat and her husband. I remember them. Uh, I got not paid. It's a long story, but I, I think I called my agent to buy me flight tickets to go home and he didn't offer to pay for those. So I had to pay myself plus... Uh, I earned zero money, even though I did the shows and stuff like that. And like a few years later, this pussycat had the audacity to contact me if I wanted to shoot porn with them. Has who is this pussycat? She's, She's a, a Vietnamese yeah. Vietnamese French performer. So when after she already scammed you in a few years, she was hoping you forget about it. And, and guys, then, I left. Like, I left in the middle of the night. Uh, and that time, barely speaking good English, I, I'm surprised I wasn't kidnapped, kidnapped actually, because I needed to get a phone that worked because I didn't even have an iPhone back then. So some strange man helped me out. So it was very sad. It's horrible. And in that company that you mentioned, the old year one, they, they were, I mean, they might have changed now, but I remember a few years ago, they were a horrible company. For me, company. it doesn't matter. They, they don't even use real tests. They oh, get, yeah, they test you they, there. They, they, they use home STI home tests and they STI think that's test. okay. Yeah. Unbelievable. Oh, my God. And they were the ones complaining the most when um, we improved testing standards in Europe. But anyway, so much. I have a really good story about testing. It's Surprisingly, it uh, involved Rocco and uh, Brill Babes. Oh, really? Hit yeah. Me. Tell me. So I had a couple of uncomfortable uh, experience, like Rocco shoot and other things when my agent just let me uh, stand in front of a door for 50 minutes and she would just casually forget to tell me in uh, for Perfect Gonzo that like, oh, actually the ring never works and you should just call me. And I called the producers that you are there. And I was just waiting in front of the door because I thought like I'm at the exact same door and then just mm-hmm. they are not there anyways. So I had a couple of bad experience, but then the, the, the worst one after, I, that was my first break mm-hmm. after porn. I was booked for Rocco for a threesome with uh, Sasha Rose. And I just felt like, like again, like a like a wet wipe. Mm-hmm. Like a once he was wet wipe, I was ordered to be there at eight a.m. and we haven't even started shooting sex till like seven p.m. Wow! It, and it's not even like a extraordinary day. Yeah, it's, it's just yeah, like yeah, I've, yeah. it's one of the most normal thing. In but thank God I was not shooting anal back then. So lucky Sasha Rose, she was doing the anal and it was Rocco's production for, he was the actor, uh, we were the two female talent and somebody was um, taking pictures and t- being a cameraman. And I remember Sasha Rose was like almost like fainting by 5 p.m. because she was doing things by the rule that she was not eating anything all day. She was oh, yeah, feeling yeah. so weak. And uh, by the time we started shooting, uh, Rocco expected me to do ass to mouth. So uh-huh. you should, and poor Sasha, like she was not clean by then. And he would just like, oh, come on, baby, suck it. And I'm like, no. Oh, come on, baby. Like, it's not clean. Mm-hmm. And it's no offense to Sasha Rose because yeah, yeah, like, yeah. it's a, first of all, it's a human body, even if you clean one yeah. hour earlier like anything can happen but when i refused to do it and then Rocco was just absolutely didn't care about when, when hygiene he's just like i have a feeling he enjoyed the situation that yeah, you, uh, he just command me and i i do whatever and you don't need to do that for real you can just cut you can just edit to do ass to mouth like yeah but maybe he, wh- yeah, but he didn't show want to clean it. It. no 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 he wanted you yeah, to clean it. Yeah, and I it. remember I was numerous time, and I felt like even Sasha, Sasha was feeling bad and ashamed of herself for like not being diamond yeah. clean. And it's like she was not the one who was supposed to feel bad. Rocco mm. should have felt bad for 
pressuring me to do it. And you said a testing story, though. Is that so? Uh, it was uh, so after this, and it was like a crazy long shooting, really tiring. Anyway, it was absolutely not uh, a good experience. I felt like I want to take some time off from porn, so I actually like just did a test uh, before this movie. Uh, and I get to know a couple who do webcam. Mm -hmm. And it was super chill. I started uh, webcaming with them just a few hours. Like they respected me. I didn't have to be there for 14 hours. It was great. Anyways, uh, after a few days of shooting together, the guy started feeling really bad down there. And... Um, we all went to get tested and it turned out uh, he had gonorrhea. Mm -hmm. But that can happen. It, it can happen. And I had like a good test and I only have been with uh, Rocco and Sasha Rose and they were a couple. So they were just doing webcam with me. So then me, I'm a reliable person. I called my agent, real babes to tell them like, Hey, somehow I got gonorrhea. Uh, I had a negative test and I had one shoot with Rocco and Sasha Rose. Just, uh, be, just please let them know that they should get tested. And she just refused to call Rocco and tell him, no, Rocco is fine. And I'm like, but I just get tested with gonorrhea. Uh, probably I get from one of them or something yeah, or like even that still, like but, you've but like it's not to blame i'm not blaming them yeah, like, it's just, how could we you just do this tested. to me i'm just i'm just reporting i have it so probably you have it so you yeah. should get tested before you which is the process and the agents are responsible yeah and, and she she felt uh, and and she was like no he's fine i'm like how the fuck you you yeah, know he's it takes fine. like of two to three weeks to um, to show as well. So. Yeah, and then it was back then before one of the the male actor got HIV, so we had the yeah. worst well, uh, the quality well, testing. Well, a, a lot of people would refuse to do work in Budapest because every time they came, they went home with gonorrhea. I'm not. I'm not. And it's because the testing was so bad. Like <clears throat> the men, they do their own test. They don't even have to do it. They can just spit on it yeah. or whatever. So like. And um, the test was so badly calibrated, like it wasn't PCR for um, for. And it was valid for three weeks. Yeah, not two, yeah, but, so it's even a longer weeks, window. I think. Is it four? Oh, it was four. I, when I joined, it was three. Maybe it was three. Three weeks. Know. Three weeks. Yeah, it was twenty-one days, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's three weeks and, um, between friends. But yeah, the, the, these and tests. And for everybody. <laughs> the test for gon I can tell you more about this because the test for gonorrhea and chlamydia. Like now we get it done PCR, but there, were, there used to be two labs here, G1 and Interlab. G1 did PCR tests for gonorrhea and chlamydia. Interlab didn't. So they stopped sending models to get tested at G1. I didn't they even know G1 exists. They sent me to Interlab yeah. Well, they all the stopped time. sending models to G1 because they kept getting positive tests. So <laughs> it's like... That was crazy. They, so instead of like saying, oh, well, then maybe we should get treatment... They said, no, no, the test result must be wrong. So like most performers in Budapest permanently had some kind of background infection. Yeah, it's the testing so was so bad, yeah. So the, the guy back then I was like casually having sex with, he also felt bad. And of, obviously, of course, he also had gonorrhea. So when I called, yeah. called Esther, she was just like getting really upset and she was just denying. I'm like... Why? What's so wrong with getting tested? It's so that like, was like, I absolutely, this put me off from porn. That was like, kind of like me one year in porn. And after I just took a long break. And since then, I'm not really active in porn from time to time. I came back to shoot for a shorter period. <laughs> but this really, this really put me off. Like, mm. how can, how can she know? And you were so... I, I know like, you you're such reliable. a you're such a passive person as well like it's really hard to piss you off so yeah so it was <laughs> crazy and I felt like okay this is like this is just too much and for a for a while I um um kept on shooting a little bit and then in half year or something that was the I got a so-called uh, preventive 
syphilis injection. Mm. Oh. Yeah, the, the, the preventive syphilis injection that we're not meant to get. Somebody had syphilis in Prague, but it's not here, it's in Prague. Always in Prague. It's always in Prague, in Prague, Prague and like the, the, the syphilis cannot travel through borders. Anyway, yeah. so then they just decided, uh, they just like not shut down, like the proto- like what we should do to follow the protocols. She was just uh, sent everybody to have a preventive syphilis injection to this really strange doctor. He's who, such a shady doctor. He just gives out antibiotics, like just. To yeah, anyone. and after my body was fucked up mm. for so long, like. Yeah, you shouldn't be having a preventive, preventative it's syphilis it's injection. Yeah. There is no such thing as preventive syphilis. Well, I spoke to injection. when I spoke to Pierre Woodman. Um, Esther had told him that the reason I don't use Brill Babes is because I refuse to have a preventative syphilis injection. And I was like, but at the time I wasn't performing, like I was using other men. So it's like clearly not true. But yeah, I would have refused. I would have just waited, not done any work, and then had a test after three months or something, and then got treatment if I needed it. I have yeah, I think we're pretty much done, aren't we? Like, um, I feel like we could talk for hours. Yeah, I mean, it's a good conversation to have, and like, I don't know what the conclusion is. Like, do you have the anything con- else to add on your Rocco story, or is that your whole experience? I don't know. Uh, what to add? So, I had a, a few more shoots with him. My very latest, it was a uh, foursome three three girls with him and it was absolutely terrible shoot again <laughs> i was ordered to be there in the middle of nowhere in his countryside studio at 8 a.m mm-hmm. and three girls was there so i was just sitting on the bench for two whole hours while the other two girls got makeup absolutely i felt feel is disrespectful i try to wake up and and have a positive attitude and think about like maybe I'm gonna have a great sex today. I'm gonna have a yeah, good. Because you makeup. love sex, like I know you. Yeah, like- and then I just felt like I don't want to have sex at all. <laughs> when I get like ten hours later, it was terrible. I had to do anal, so I was not really eating all day. I had my period, and it was mm. like a crazy storm out there. You know, he has this like really big keramia dogs, yeah. and the wind just blow them. They are like, oh cool yeah so but it, it was a terrible like, day and for 10 hours i was just not having sex or anything and i felt like this is just for me um there was a uh, one scene i think it was a threesome and we finally agreed with rocco that i will perform anal in that scene mm-hmm. and but because it was the average you know from uh 8 a.m. and maybe start photos around 5, 6 p.m. What if the fuck you do lucky, they do all day? What I don't do know, do but day? it doesn't matter. But I was uh, feeling disrespected and it nervous. Just, they don't care about your time. They I know, but, if, you know, like with us, it was specific that I'm doing like my second ever anal for him in this scene. And we, we had zero discussions before the scene. You know, it was like... It was almost as if it didn't matter that I will have anal, but for me it was a big deal. Mm-hmm. And then just in the middle of the scene, Rocco was like, basically like, so are you having anal today or you don't? And I was like, no, I guess I, I'm not. And then he was like, then fuck it. And then it was just a regular scene. Mm-hmm. Wow, because when you actually said yes, he doesn't want it anymore. <laughs> no, but, but he, when you say no, he's no, he probably wanted it but, it. but he call, <laughs> he calls me bipolar, and so he was probably just thinking, Ugh, whatever, you know. But he he literally was like, "So, are you having anal or not?" Like you know, like it's time to include it in your scene, and I'm like. <sighs> mm. so, you know yeah. what else upsets me? Mm. The lack of. Um, things there's like there's no food on set never no. or or the cheap, they or have. the cheapest toast yeah, or whatsoever they improved that yeah. they did okay maybe after I'm, the podcast that you did last time 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, or, or there's no soap. See, the pot... Like, no there, soap. there would be a soap, and I'm wearing my dress for the scene, and I try to, like, you know, like, press it. Yeah. And the whole soap squirts on my dress, because it's replaced with, like, 90% water and 10% yeah. soap. Uh, there is no towel offered. No. You know what I find really weird? He he built this brand new, amazing looking house, this gray one with the swimming pool. But that's pool. for him, it's not for you. It's for him and it's a minus one floor, ground floor and first floor. And there is only one bathroom one. in the three floor, only one. And the bathroom, there is a toilet in yes, the bathroom. Yes, yes. So there, this is when what I happens did my when last, stars think last architects. Anal, anal scene, I was douching and the guy, the male talent, was injecting his dick like just this much from me because it was like a three square meter bathroom. Lovely. So yeah, I, I, wanna... I really recognize him as like a, who has a great charisma and a really big... Uh, yeah, whatever. I, Motivational speaker and stuff, but and like he's an incredible the way he just it seems like there's consent he's issues. He's leading his business. I think he's he's being very cheap. It's interesting because he's of all the productions, he's, greedy, he's probably yeah. one of the wealthiest people in porn. Yeah, because he, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't matter. Soap. It doesn't matter. Oh, and there's no electricity in the whole house. What? There's no electricity. But it's there's a studio, like no, right? Not a house. Uh, it's a studio, but like, uh, it's really crazy that uh, they just have those like really long, I don't know how many meters of cable and like there's like no lamp you can turn on. So after the sun goes down, then you shoot in that house, you can't find anything because there's no electricity. You can fall on the st stairs because you can't see. Let's wrap it up. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think, I think for me, um, Obviously, it's good to hear someone else's experience. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Shona. I really appreciate you doing it because yeah. a lot of girls thank were you. too scared to say anything. Do you offer me a bodyguard? Because yeah, Kiara. Do I, can <laughs> I have any protection after speaking? I am your protection. I don't yeah? think I don't think you need a bodyguard. We are but, each other's protection. Um, but we'll be really interested to see if you get a phone call from Esther after the podcast because that seems to be. I might already blocked her. Uh -huh. <laughs> Well, or maybe an email or something. Yeah, we'll see. Um, or from Diana Dolce. But it seems like the key thing for me is that it's another person saying that there's no communication before the scene. and that I'm saying that too. Yeah. It's you not only show. That's what I mean. I say another person. Oh, ah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and like, that's key for me. Like, I just don't understand how you can produce porn without having these conversations There's first. There's zero communication. Now, I don't understand how these Because girls this is how you can get consenting. more out of the people. But that's not... Because it's a business, so they not, all they care that's about... That's now it, how it should be. Yeah, and no. it's not just how it should be. It's like ethically, morally, and possibly legally wrong. I think, obviously, I'm not a judge, so it's not for me to decide. But you can be. You I should be. My... You are the queen of... Ki king queen. of absolutely everything. Yes. So, um, well, I can give my personal opinion. It's, it's entitles you that money. Yeah. Um, well, actually, I've decided possibly not to shoot porn in 2023 at all. Oh, nice. And but I feel like we're not the most popular people in the porn industry right now. As well. I'm fine, popular <laughs> still. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm not. I'm really You're not. fine, too. So, yeah, but just... Yeah, it's it's been a lot. So yeah, my, my inbox is absolutely full of DMs um, Good. of horror stories, not just about. I'm wondering why they don't come and talk here because they depend afraid, on the industry. Yeah, you know, like money wise and work also wise. some people just don't want to look like a victim, or some people just yeah. Cannot yeah, but handle do you think because the they speak up against one single person, the other? people wouldn't book them like is there yeah. any connection yes, absolutely of course yeah so what the total different studios has to do with one single well, person for or example, producer one of the people that was going to come that was thinking about coming forward and being on the podcast um they were told by the editor of xbiz not to speak out 
um, because the porn industry is attacked by Christian groups and things like this. So if they speak out about their personal problem, you know, they they can be jeopardizing the entire industry for everybody. The shade. Uh, the w way X it is behaving. It was just reforming it. For, the way X is fat. behaving guys, in this is absolutely uh, disgusting. So Maybe yeah. in the future more uh, people will come out, so... Maybe more people seeing Shona speak will make more people come out. Yeah. I don't know. Mm. All righty. Yep. Gotta go and pick so. up my Gucci watch. Cookie. Gucci. Yeah. yeah, so, um, yeah, thanks so much for sharing. I do think it's incredibly brave yeah, it's, thing it's to do. Yeah, it's very brave. Like, not many people Empowering, will. right? Empowering. That's the, that's the yeah. word. And, um... And then we'll see what happens. Like, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think I have anything else to add on this story. So, like, it's out there. Like, so with season it what you want. one is closing. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, <laughs> I've absolutely had enough of it. So, um, I'm looking forward to just talking about dicks again. And positive, Ooh, positive, positive sex. Woo